if the money was right, would y'all do a BT comic view set? Yeah, if the money was wrong. If the money was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you love it that much that you were like, nah, I'll go do it tonight. I get seven dollars. I get seven minutes to yeah. it, yeah, just to do it, yeah. Damn. I think I would do it out of ego more than out of genuine belief that I would do well okay. or enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's gonna like take my career to the next level or anything like that. Nah, I think or that I would even kill. But you know, you gotta do it if they if they offered it. I think I'd do fine, but I don't think that I'd be like Arn S J. No, uh, no, sliding no. his dick across okay. the floor. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same set. <laughs> There it is, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, Gentiles and little mamas alike, there it is. Welcome to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me. The podcast where we dive deep into the pockets of black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that what Will Smith is experiencing is in fact a lingering curse from the dark-skinned Aunt Viv. That bitch put a hex on him some some 30 years ago for the bullshit he was proving. And all of this is the fallout from that curse. And I know they've made up. I know they squashed the beef in a public sense. But what she fucking felt all those years ago for the way that she that he played her that's a curse that can't be lifted you know what i mean that ain't that ain't going nowhere just because y'all hugged on hbo max Uh uh-uh i'm langston kerman i'm david borey and i would argue what he was uh experiencing was that dwayne martin triple double He was murdering uh, him. That nigga said he was <laughs> killing his shit. <laughs> he was killing <laughs> He was like, I don't even like that shit, but he was killing He him. was like, bro, just as a, a, a fan of the game, <laughs> a fan of back shots, <laughs> as a profession, that nigga was killing him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe he, that was what I, because you know Twitter Twitter gives you just the phrase and it was like he was he was killing him as like a, a trending topic and I'm like all right this is gonna get sad this is gonna be a fucking like something related to evil in Palestine right now like it's gonna be some ugly shit and instead it was just the greatest video <laughs> that could be out right now I get it though cause I've just you've seen like animals before and you've been like god damn that god. dog is killing that yeah dude. that's a that's a wild dog yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> That dog ain't got no home training. Yo. <laughs> Thank God they're outside. <laughs> Here's what I'll say. And we we have to introduce our guests. And frankly, uh, if you want to jump in, you're more than welcome. We realize that this is a, this is a trendy topic yes. to leave you just waiting <laughs> on. But but I will say, <laughs> I will say that it it makes me sad if if true. And obviously, there's there's plenty of reason to believe that this is just made up from a, a toxic man uh, upset about losing his relationship mm-hmm. with Will Smith. But if true, I will say it breaks my heart that they don't get to kill each other in a public, safe way. That they can't truly be honest about the relationship that they right. obviously have. Oh, you think Will Smith was trying to kill as well as be killed? No, 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 I don't think he's switching. I think if Will Smith gets killed like that, he just stays killed like that. But I'm saying I wish that their partnership could be honest out in the world and not just something that a assistant would walk in on and then say right. on a sad podcast. Do you think Tisha Campbell knew? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you can clap cheeks the way he described it <laughs> and and anyone is unaware. <laughs> there was doo-doo feces thrown all over the walls, the floor, the ceiling, and it stunk wow. so bad. Uh, that's 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 the smell of passion. Yeah. <laughs> How did you get here, bitch? I called the fuck. Nobody supposed to be here. Well, bitch, I came the fuck. Oh, uh, I just want. <laughs> <laughs> I just want them to be in love, man. I really do. I don't think love was what was going on in there. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, man. Fuck, killing this shit. Our guest today. <laughs> <laughs> Way to bring me on, guys. This, sorry, this, this, sorry, bro. I. <laughs> this is... I cannot... I wish I could tell you that this was a unique experience and you are a, this was a, a some sort of personal thing to you. Mm -mm. It is not. We rarely set anybody up for a comfortable entrance. Okay. That's the problem. It, it's, we just be talking and then we, <laughs> and then afterwards oh, we be like, damn, uh, <laughs> whew. All right. Well, this has nothing to do with, <laughs> <laughs> with this very funny person we've asked to be here, but here we are. Our guest today is so fucking funny. He's great. You know him from Comedy Central. You know him. And then this is important. This is a little bit of, 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 I can, I, what is it? Iconography? What, what's the word that? I that, think that's it. This nigga's an icon <laughs> right now and, and not getting enough credit for it. He is the first, as far as I know, the first black beard in history stars in a Postmates commercial proving it, documented. Ain't no, ain't been no black, black beard before this nigga. Give it up for our guest, Mr. Keith Johnson. You want me to say the line? Yes. <laughs> oh, we gonna be pillaging. <laughs> oh, we gonna be pillaging. <laughs> People ask me all the time, man. I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> uh, oh, black men. Hey, 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 what's up, brother? All right. Do the thing. Do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, you and the Allstate guy for me. There, you know, they're, they're, they're two real black icons. Man, shout out to the Allstate guy. That, that was big. Dog, he had a run. Yeah. I met him one time. Really? Yeah, Damn. he wasn't interested. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, he didn't think it was cool at all. Nah, he's like, I'm not going to talk to you about that. No, I just, I didn't even say anything about All Star. We were recording in the same studio because that's where he does them. Yeah, but he and could see in your eyes. You I wanted it too bad. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't respect him the way yeah. he wants to be respected. I, I, I think I was too much respect. Oh, you think he, th this was like overwhelming? Yeah, respect. and he had just hopped out of a Porsche. I was leaving in an Uber. Oh, okay. I got it. Just, it didn't go great. Keith. Yeah, man. Thank you for I, being here, man. I caught this up is... on the Will Smith news. I, that's I I came in kind of blind to it, and now I'm seeing it. And it, no, oh, you didn't. No, oh, you hadn't heard that. Doing. I was like, oh, okay, oh. but it makes sense. It does make sense. And I think that's why he played. Yeah, he played man. quiet for so long because he got secrets. Yeah, Jada. Uh, I believe today a video came out of Jada leaving a building. And uh, a paparazzi person asking her, "What you? What do you think of these these allegations? Whatever." And she stops in the street and says, "Suing, <laughs> we we're suing or, or suing that shit or some shit." Like truly is like being vocally like, yeah. "What the fuck?" That to shit all was of it. Yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah. I, I, uh, I didn't know it was going to reach this level. I thought you didn't think would... it was going to reach this level. No, I, you know what? They for years never paid attention to anything anyone said about them. It used to be that they ignored everything, which is how they kept their problems so quiet. Right. And then the post tape red table talk era, they transformed into now we will address every single rumor about us. And I didn't, I, I'm still not used to that with them. I thought maybe they would just ignore it like they had when they were true fucking powerhouse people in the industry. Now they're messy bitches who love no, drama. Somebody's got to. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a weird energy that, okay. that shifted. And it's that's a, crazy. Yeah, man. Fuck. <sighs> Were were you a Will Smith guy growing I, up? Keith? I was the Will you, Smith guy, you, uh, man. Yeah, yeah, big Willie style. I bumped the whoa. Mm -hmm. I bumped okay. the uh, Men in Black album. Watch all the movies. Fresh yeah. Prince. I I I mean, yeah. I, this is kind of a conspiracy theory, but I think the two black archetypes in Hollywood right now are: it's either you're a Will Smith guy, you know, you got the jeans with the big Jordans on, or you're a Kanye guy. Oh, yeah. So you have, you had, these are the two, you know, cultural icons that we follow. Oh, so, damn. You fuck. Know. Yeah. Damn. damn. That's heartbreaking if those yeah. are the, the two. <laughs> I gotta get out the game. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> fuck. I, yeah, I ain't it, got You're not wrong. Either. I definitely, I mean, I rode for them separately, mm -hmm. but equally at, at various points in my Who life. We like, have. God damn. Yeah. I would say, I, I don't even feel like I rode for Will Smith because it was such a given. Right. Mm. Does that make sense? Like people, when people would be like, I'm a Will Smith fan. I'd be like, yeah, shut up, loser. Everybody. Right. We all are. Who Will cares? Smith shut fans. Like, I remember I had a teacher in eighth grade and she was like, I love Will Smith and he doesn't cuss in his raps. And I was like, shut up, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it was just like, it was so ingrained in the culture that you didn't even have to like acknowledge it you know he just was uh for such a specific era he was such a defining type of cool that like i don't know that i'll ever undo from my head you know no. what i mean like he was the coolest motherfucker on the planet so cool. in my brain <laughs> and and that can't be fixed like i still watch them old episodes i'd be like this nigga cool man god damn See, he's just fucking cool he was cool but here's the problem for me he was so cool that i felt like such the other that i never related to will smith gotcha uh, you know what i'm saying i know he was so cool it was past being aspirational you know what i mean like i'm a jeffrey guy from way back mm, that guy i think i in my head and i think this is probably the ego of comedians and people who want to be fucking stars like us I think I did think I could be that cool someday. <laughs> Damn. I, I think, I didn't think I was at the time. Right. I think I understood my place, but I was like, nah, if I, if I get a few things together, you I can make a Will I Smith can run. This. I can, <laughs> yeah. Ah, like yeah. if you got the right team. Yeah. In my brain, I was like, nah, I can. Next I can five summers. You were like, if I get an agent, <laughs> if I get an agent, I can have Dwayne Martin doing this shit. <laughs> Just <Man>. destroying me. <laughs> the, the, the moment I realized Will Smith was cool was, it was the, I think it was the pilot episode. And, he sat down at the piano and he had his tuxedo on with the George and he mm. started playing for a lease. And you're like, yo, he got gears, bro. Yeah. He, he got depth. Bro. The, that was on, like man. black depth that we've never seen before. You know, he could play the piano too. Yeah. We taking him for granted, you know? Yeah, we yeah. thought he could just rap. Man, man. Yeah. He had it. Yeah, this is hard. This is hard oh. to talk about. <laughs> Nigga ain't got it no more. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have Will Smith apologize just like we had like uh, the older generation had, had oh, the least like Bill Cosby. Like, no, nah, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. We're going to be like, Will Smith ain't gay. He ain't gay. <laughs> <laughs> He's complicated. He's hurting. Sexuality is a spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> it bums me out that Dwayne Martin was the one. Like, you think he could have gone... I'm not against Dwayne oh, Martin. Oh, you think he was lowering his, his I own think, standards. I think he could have got somebody a little... Yeah, more reputable. But what a, to see. Remember what a rising star Dwayne Martin was when they began their relationship. That's true. Like, had he had well, what, he had only had a couple basketball movies at that point, right? Yeah, I think I think he seemed like a dude, probably you know, on the fucking way. Right, right. Above the rim just came out. You know what it reminds me of? Remember in the in the uh, the fucking Jordan doc that the Bulls doc that they just did. Remember on the bus when Michael Jordan's listening to the music and he's dancing like this? Brother, he, I will say, never forget. <laughs> <laughs> he's just doing this shit for stop some reason. Stop doing it. Please stop. And then and they say, Michael, what are you listening to? He says, huh? Oh, it's that new Kenny Lattimore. <laughs> no, Kenny Loggins. <laughs> oh, is it Kenny Loggins? <laughs> Wait, no, it's got to be Kenny Lattimore. I thought it was Lattimore. Kenny Lattimore. <laughs> but he's, he's, 
it's that new Kenny Lattimore. And everybody's like, oh, shit, Kenny Lattimore. He got the new thing. It ain't even out yet. And, and nobody gives a fuck about Kenny Lattimore anymore. You know what I mean? But at the time, Michael Jordan was fucking getting yeah. new Kenny Lattimore. Oof, doing that weird dance. <laughs> I realized we never seen Michael Jordan dance like for real. Yeah, the no, signs were there. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. He always, yeah. When did when did he yeah. when do you think he like shifted to becoming like a bad dresser? I think as soon as he got any modicum of control gotcha. over his dress. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like, I think when he was in the height of it, he had no, he was not picking clothes or designs or anything. I think as soon as like. He could pick the jeans. I okay. think that's when it went bad. Yeah, and I also, I, I think it was that sh- in that it became a shift between Nike and the Jordan brand being tethered together and Nike and the Jordan brand separating. Right, like, right. After the separation, Nike stopped having control and he's just a dude in charge. So he's like, I don't need a fucking stylist. I'm not paying for a fucking stylist. I'll dress <laughs> myself. I'm the goddamn CEO, and them jeans got so thick Bro, and so, so large. The, you remember how ambitious? <laughs> you remember how how ambitious Jordan Brand was in the early aughts? Yeah, like, I was watching an episode of King of Queens the other day, and the black dude was wearing a Jordan turtleneck and jeans, mm. <laughs> and you were like, "Whoa, we thought he could give us that, <laughs> <laughs> like a turtleneck." Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he went The crazy. moment he became yeah. Republican, that's when it shifted. And he's like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. Come on, baby. Okay. I don't know. I think he became Republican <laughs> after that first championship. I was I think he was like, Oh, I think I ain't gotta None care about chicks. nothing. No, no I think it was after the first check. Oh, you think immediately in the NBA he was like, fuck these niggas back home. <laughs> I think so for sure. You never yeah. he doesn't have like even to his credit. Even Will Smith has like a Charlie Mack, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, friends, mm-hmm. friends from Philadelphia. You don't hear about nobody hanging out with Jordan from North Carolina. That's ever. true. He's ever. got a he's got an older brother that does not seem mm-hmm. to come around that often. He's got an older brother who said he who could hoop. Apparently, he, yeah, he said he was better than him. Never, never no. hear about that guy, Larry. Right, Larry Jordan. I, I believe so. Yeah, I believe it's Larry. Jordan. LJ yeah. and his son, you know. His son doesn't. <laughs> LJ. <laughs> MJ and LJ. Yeah, no, yeah, his son doesn't, his kids don't really no. fuck with him like that. Which his, is too bad because them niggas need guidance. Huge guidance. Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> they need a father figure. Dog, oh, um, boy. Imagine your dad being so awful that you that you go to Larsa Pippen now and say, Let's make something happen here, baby girl. <laughs> How unstable was your life that that's, that's, the, that's the grounding force? Uh, baby, I'm ready to build. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the most stable. You're the most stable person in my life. Yeah, I, I got to stop Let fucking me, around and focus here. I'm a one woman, Pippen. man. I've known you since, since you came to my <laughs> fifth birthday party. Because she, she must have been there, right? No, they got married late, though. No, apparently she used to babysit. Oh, wow. Okay, so that does, part of me is like, that's pretty cool. (laughs) Like, just like initial feelings? No, no, no. See, this is where I disagree with you. And and I know know what you're doing. I know what you're about to do. You're... You're heading in the direction of sort of saying that, like, we anybody who can fuck their babysitter, hats off, kudos to No, no, no. I think a lot of people fuck their babysitter, and it's a huge bummer. Okay. Because of sexual assault. But sure, okay. I get what you mean. All right. I'm saying that he hung out in the pocket and came back and got it. Played the long game. Mm. You know what I mean? Like on that Drake lyric, you know what I mean? <laughs> I guess where I start to worry is at the end of the day, this is still in that long game. You are watching her have a full relationship with Scottie Pippen. <laughs> and then lose that full relationship, lose his marriage because she fucked future. Which that, Hey, and then went on tales old as time reality television (laughs) show. (laughs) 
to not even a successful reality television show to go be a problem elsewhere. Like you've seen a lot of bad shit to then be like, I'm yeah. gonna marry this lady. <sighs> Fuck guys. This, this is, is all, not how it, it went dark. It bummer. went very dark <laughs> immediately. <laughs> The problem is because we started with him killing that shit. Yeah. Where were we going to go? I don't know. But, uh, Keith, you came to us <laughs> with a conspiracy that that at least will cause more... Pro- no, I think this is all... This is has the potential to be a positive episode. A rare, just uplifting, beautiful episode. Because you said, my mama told me... Ray J is the godfather of culture. He started it all. All things go to Ray J. And there's a connecting line in, mm, in every... I, I wish I had my map with the red strings to connect the dots to show y'all. But <laughs> it, he's there. He's present. I I remember when we were at... Uh, I was at yeah. your house, David. We were watching... Uh, what's that channel we were watching? Zeus. Oh, Zeus. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you know who owns this? We were watching Ray J. Uh, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Good for you for calling it a channel. I don't a think network. they get. I don't even think they have have the right to. I think there's like legal ramifications for them referring to themselves as a channel. And the Andrew Bachelor King Batch Ray J Enterprise. That's that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, wait, is King is King Batch a, a, a dual owner inside of this? It's him and Ray J. I fellas, All I did not know that. Ray J. <laughs> I knew Ray J. I knew Ray J. You didn't think but, he had a piece of baddies <laughs> of the East? I knew Ray J was a was an owner, but King Batch being an owner of that is fucking. That's a what? That's a surprise twist for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Keith's man. Yeah, I went to school with him. Yeah, whoa. I watched it. So that's how you knew. knew yeah, I, what his it's hard was. for me to you, call you him. You were throwing it around. Yeah, like I was we like, I, I can't call <laughs> King can't Batch. Call no, <laughs> you are Andrew Bachelor. I'll say this. I respect his commitment mm-hmm. to the brand. There's been a lot of reasons for him at some point to to not stop referring to himself as King Batch. And he's been like, no, nah, that's that's the that's, yeah. that's what I picked. Heavy is the uh, crown. heavy is the burger king crown so so all things point to to ray j tell us where this started for you i mean like i said the breakdown of of cultural icons right you got will smith you got kanye if you look on the right side you got kanye west who married kim kardashian right who started you know kim kardashian's career Here's the inside Mm -hmm, information mm -hmm. that I have. I used to work for the Kardashians. Rumor is that the (laughs) that the mom went to (laughs) the uh, went to Buna Murray and was like, "We need to make this. We got the tape. We need to we need to flip it into a show." And then that was the beginning. Sure. Wait, she went to the production company. Rumor is the tape. uh, Yeah, that man. That's what Dwayne Martin should have done. Yeah, that, but all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want them living out loud, even if it's messy. Even if it's messy, just you want to watch go be free. Burn. Come on, man. I want to see them cheeks get murdered uh, for real. Here's here's my <laughs> question: Do you think because Ray J is the Godfather of culture, do you think he was p- picked for that specific task? Of being the one to roll out Kim Kardashian. Oh, right. Like a golden child. Well, like she had seen him and she was like, I've seen a lot right. of other people, but this guy seems to be the guy who could get us over the hump. Because was uh, that? Right, right, right. That's a good That's a good question. Who Who were her previous boyfriends, though? It was like Nick Cannon. It was Chris, Chris right, Humphrey. Like they it. didn't have the sauce. They didn't have that. Like the thing about no. Ray J is he has the dark side of him. Which is what allows him to be like, you know what? The black community will be fine if we put out Zeus. They're, we're not going to be hurt by it, even though it is going to be damaging to us. So he has that, he has that like villain thing where you're like, it's, yeah, it's necessary, it but you're going to like, did the world change because of Kim Kardashian? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, huh. You know what's weird about Ray J is I, to your point about him turning it off, 
I truly think that the most terrifyingly powerful people on this planet are people who don't have to move with any fear of repercussions. And I think that True. he is an example of one of those individuals. Donald Trump is another who sort of moves in that same way, where it's just like, bro, whatever's in you, it it doesn't fear anything. Right. Like some of I'm afraid of so many things that could happen to me. And Ray J is not. And you see it all the time when he's moving. You know what I mean? Ray J moves like he assumes he's going to live forever. Also, yeah. I've been, I was excited that you brought this up because, like, this is a conversation I've had with mm-hmm. so many people. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. that just, Ray J's real ass nigga. Like, I think about how many times you've had that talk where, like, I've just known, pro- I probably had that conversation with mm-hmm. 10 different dudes. You know what's funny is, like, uh, people make fun of Ray J or had historically made fun of Ray J a lot. But I actually think that was much more of, like, a white thing than it was a black thing. Like, I think niggas were more like, nah, I, I know what that is. How I can you not see Ray that he's Ray. doing his thing? Yeah, like, I, I nobody was, like, mad at Ray J. And then white people sort of made him more of, like, a direct punchline of being like, look at this stupid. Because he was... A, he, he all the the fixings right. are there to make fun of. He's a little guy. He's Brandy's brother. He does all these antics. It it seems like right. an easy target. And don't get me wrong, the antics are hilarious. It's great, right? very funny. <laughs> a, Come on, break them. I don't care. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna get my niggas who like niggas. <laughs> all, a lot of stuff he's done yeah. is so hilarious. It's he's fucking hysterical. But has he ever lost? No, he's never lost. Has Ray J ever taken an L? What? What? what what's uh, Ray J L? No, I don't. I mean, I think at best you could say that like there was that period I think where he was like get, he had like trouble with his his kid because him and the girl had broken up, whatever. But like even then, nobody was rooting against Ray J. Everybody's just like I don't know. And the checks, checks keep coming. coming. He met with Donald yeah. Trump. Just to, I know you compared him to they. They met unscathed no one touched him they fucked kanye up but they didn't ray j's like yeah i pulled up I pulled nobody up even looked at ray j <laughs> <laughs> it, anytime anytime he has taken an l because i'm thinking back on the time uh i didn't didn't like fabulous make him play like the piano or something or it was something ray j had to no. was that ray j or was that mayweather Did, you're thinking it was Mayweather, I think, uh, made him play the piano or right. told him to play the piano. And he sort of like had a, it was a bad performance, I think, yeah, yeah. that ate it alive. Am, am I okay. remembering that correctly? But even then, it's like, yeah, but we wouldn't, Ray right. J just went viral again. Like, yeah, he's just winning, baby. It's, he never, even, even with the g- funny glasses, how many of those glasses did he sell though? Way more mm-hmm. than he was gonna sell. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Way more bunny eyes than bunny eyes is gonna be able to push their themselves. Come on, that was a stupid idea. It's fucking idiotic. <laughs> Even when he did it, <laughs> like there was never a moment in me where I was like, "Oh, but if he wasn't being silly, that's actually cool." Like that, I can see how why they would do that. I was like, "This is this doesn't make any sense." He he has headphones too, right? <laughs> Then he come on Ray Khan. Ray Khan yeah, yeah. That phone. That's I'm no L's. No L's taken. Hey, hey, he spent. I don't know if you guys remember when Raycons first came out, but but part of the entire pitch of Raycon was being like, Apple is trash. Is <laughs> you've been dealing with these <laughs> Apple fucking headphones all this time. When you can have Raycons, baby. <laughs> Look at my Raycons. They the same size. They last longer and they taste good. (laughs) (laughs) Who goes head up with Steve Jobs? Yo, that's what I'm saying. That's crazy. Come on. He can't. And and he didn't lose. He just didn't. He just did what Ray J Mm -hmm. was supposed to do. I I could buy some Raycons, right? I'm I'm going to the website. I don't think you should. I'll be honest. I, I think he's a winner. I don't think the products are. Pretty good deals. <laughs> Got a lot of I, sales. I think he just doesn't have the machine behind him, but if he did, they would have been the beats by Dre easily. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, here's yeah. the thing: even if you don't have that machine to make it a billion dollar company, 
It could still be a ten million dollar company. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like still, and you add that along with the media empire, like Ray J's getting money every. No, Ray What's those little what motors? Those uh-huh. little scooty bikes. Yeah, that's right. He does have bikes, bro. I'm saying mm-hmm. he's a mogul. Yeah, no, he's a real mogul for yeah. sure. Truly. Yeah. And I watched a bunch of those shows. Didn't take an no, L on those it's shows. It's good entertainment. Either. Always good entertainment. And I mean, he just. He never got embarrassed. It was always just like women fighting over him, him being like, Princess, you don't need to do this. And she's like, Fuck you, Ray J. And then he's like, All right, fucks mm-hmm. all of her friends, and she comes back. That's right. all that show. Like the show was him not no. taking a loss. No losses. Yeah. So yeah, from from that moment, Fuck. right, he he creates Kim Kardashian. That's during the last writer's strike. Then the writer's strike spawned yeah. reality Ooh, talk TV. About it. Non-scripted television Mm. which is the world we live in now if you go overseas right everyone's looking like kim kardashian she became the american beauty standard for i mean if you go to glendale you (laughs) you don't need to travel you could just go to glendale (laughs) which (laughs) some people would argue is overseas so (laughs) you gotta cross that treacherous la river No, but I mean, even here, you walk around down here. I live downtown. You walk around downtown. Now, all the girls look like everybody yeah. looks like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. And that's because of Ray J. Yeah. Ray J really tra- trained white women to, uh, mm-hmm. to embrace their bodies and somebody <laughs> else's body in a way that they were mm-hmm. they were terrified of before before yep. he came around. Which all, which also means Ray J in, in, injected, like, gave some life back into the pl- plastic right. surgery industry. Whoa. Like, if we're drawing parallel, he also did, uh, like, Dr. Miami, you got to thank Ray J. Damn. Yeah, Nip Tuck is, is yeah. off the air. This is, this is, come on. At this point, we are sober to what that industry represents. We're we sick of not, huge fake titties. Yeah, we don't, we, it's not iconic the way that it used to be. And then Ray J shows up and he's like, but what if them titties were made out of the meat from your back? And then it's like, Trust me, daddy. <laughs> and not not to make it dark, but how did Kanye's mom die? Fuck. He don't Ray take J L's. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Yo. So Ray J Fuck. doesn't do that. It's almost as if Kanye was sacrificed mm-hmm. for Ray J. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Because well, all right, I didn't look. Fuck. I don't. I'm not trying to get y'all, Damn. you know, tagged Damn. up by the CIA and the FBI, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just I'm just giving y'all the breadcrumbs to follow. Because this shit gets dark. God it gets damn. Dark. Any turn, it could just get dark. All right. When was Ray J born? 1981. Okay. What happened in 1981? Crack cocaine. So. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay. We got to okay, chill out. Just... We need to take a break. <laughs> we need to take a break. It's starting to get fucking mm-hmm. scary over here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break. We're going to come back with more Keith Johnson and more My Mama Told Me. We are back with Keith Johnson talking about how all roads lead to Ray J, to be honest. I mean, I think we've proven it somewhat at this point. Yeah. And that in that somehow Ray J, Kanye West was sacrificed for Ray J, which is which is difficult. Yeah. It's, it's, difficult. it's not an easy thing to hear out loud and and uh maybe a more difficult thing to prove, but I'm excited, Keith, to to get mm-hmm. into some of this research with you because I think maybe this will help guide your hand in sort of uh, ga- piling up right. even more evidence and or substantiating the evidence you've okay. already laid in front of us. As you may or may not know, you both probably do, the original sort of source that that is pointed to for this conspiracy theory is mm-hmm. Vince Staples. Vince Staples is sort of like the mass media source of it. Uh, he's in a interview in 2015 on Rosenberg, and I think Tyler, the creator, is there and he goes, you got to get this dude to tell you about what he believes about Ray J. And then Vince Staples breaks down all of Ray J's sort of interconnectedness throughout history relating to all the shit 
the music, the relationships, the sex tape, the the reality television, the trend setting, the booty niggas, the booty all niggas. this stuff. <laughs> he breaks it down. <laughs> now, he also does, and this is where the research sort of starts to become interesting. He also does this interview with GQ, right? That same year, they ask him to basically sit down and explain it more to white people. It seems like uh, he, he basically does the same topics, but they make him articulate it a little more like uh, clearly. And then in that article, he tells them, he tells the interviewer that Ray J is so influential that all you need to do is simply Google Ray J at, at right now and a TMZ article from a few hours ago will <laughs> pop up. And that uh, researcher does do that. He Googles Ray J, and that is, in fact, true. At the time, a TMZ article immediately linked. And remember, this is eight years ago. And in that article, the headline is Ray J becoming a Jew. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. It, it, I swear to God, eight years ago, there is a TMZ, and this is a weird bullshit bait and switch ass headline because it, all it actually is, is Ray J going and having a, a, a meal with some Jewish homies at a kosher restaurant in like popular ass New York <laughs> City trendy shit. And he has this kosher restaurant meal and he interviews and he's like, yeah, they were just telling me about like circumcisions and shit. He's like, yeah, he's like learning Jewish culture and shit. But they TMZ is having a boring day. So they say is Ray J becoming a Jew. But there is no doubt in my mind. And I can't wait to hear you all's thoughts that a Kanye West from eight years ago sees Mm -hmm. this article filled, still filled with the rage that he is filled with at Mm. Ray J sees that he's becoming a Jew, does not, in fact, read that article, mm. and then decides he hates Jews. I'm going to just add... I, <laughs> I'm going to add to that. Kanye is seven years ahead of his time, right? So he's often talking to us <laughs> from... <laughs> yeah. Continue. So when that happened, <laughs> it's, he's talking to us in a different time space. So... What what's yeah. what's really happening? It's not World War Three. We need to prep for it. it's the the final fight between Ray J and Kanye. This nigga don't hate Jews. He just think Ray J's a Jew <laughs> and he hates Ray J. He's <laughs> he I mean, really hates Ray J. The hard part about all that though for me is like I can't hate Ray J. But you're not you're not a psychopath, my man. Fair. I really appreciate that. I think Kanye is legit out of his mind. And so he has something that none of us can do, Mm -hmm. which is hate for Ray J. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Because I, he's just so lovable. Yeah. He's fucking adorable. That's an adorable 45 year old man. (laughs) He hasn't really aged. No, he's, yeah. I'm looking uh, up a picture right now, Ray J. He has the blonde hair. With the dark hoodie. Yeah. Yeah. It's come on. Yo, you got... yo, I just Googled him to see about <laughs> that. And this isn't this isn't a week ago, but Jack A. Harry stuns fans when they learn through resurface clip she hooked up with Ray J. This is a month come ago. Come on, man. He fucked Jackie Harry. Come on, man. And and we're talking about abuse. <laughs> that that's got to be borderline. We don't know when he did it. <laughs> I bet it was after Sister Sister for sure. I, come on, I don't know, and I'm not gonna ask. And even if I did, which who's gonna hold who accountable? That's Jack A and Ray J. They deserve that's, to that's do royalty that right together. there. That. <laughs> I'm not telling the queen she can't fuck her cousin. And I'm not telling Jack A. Harry <laughs> that she can't sexually assault Ray J. Oh, I forgot. He also was with uh, Whitney Houston right mm. before the end. Uh... Yeah, that's that's one of the things that Vince Staples points to is he says that Ray J, in fact, is the person that found her. That that's that that's how iconic he sort of is in in culture. And I would argue, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, I would argue both good and bad ways. Like I No, think I don't he, think Ray J is morality. I think he's just Ray J. He is the ultimate balance <laughs> in morality almost. If I can borrow from a white film, I think Ray J might be our Forrest Gump. Mm. Oh. Right? He's just been there for all of it. Right. 
good, bad, or sad. You know what I mean? Fuck. Like, he, because, like, that's, we're talking about some pretty, pretty major events in black history that he's been personally mm-hmm. witness to. Right. That's, 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 that's right. amazing. Yeah. It, it also got me thinking because this article comes out in 2015, right? This sort of like the, the level of influence he kicks in. But you think about the eight years of influence that he's had since then. And it does feel like you're, you're almost missing major sort of like important moments in the Ray J journey, right? Like up to 2015, he is a more laughable figure, which is what made Vince sound so crazy when he was pointing to Ray J. But now it's like, it's hard not to see the impact. You There's know what I mean? Impact. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. fucking everywhere. I mean, yo, Raycon sells water filters. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. We're we're going to have a water buy one. scarcity moment sooner than later, and I, I and somebody's gonna <laughs> Raycon Incorporated. <laughs> somebody's gonna have to turn to Ray J. <laughs> uh, as far as conspiracy theories that we've had on this podcast, I don't think there's one that I've believed more unequivocally. Yeah, than this. it's just like. To, you can't deny mm-hmm. the man's impact. Yeah. Like, he, it, what I wonder is, do you think that he is, do you think that he is conscious of it? Or do you think he's just living his life mm. and that's how it plays? Like, I don't feel like he wakes up in the morning looking to influence culture. I think people like this are maybe too too psychotic to to actually be able to think that way. Do you, know what Do you I mean? think like, he's psychotic though? I think he's truly like uh, it's like he's moving a a queen around a board, but it's one move at a time. Like I don't think he thinks past the move that he, has he just pure made. presence. It, to circle back to that Michael Jordan clip, they were talking about why Michael Jordan was good, and it was because he was present in every moment. And Ray J's just present. He's he's not thinking even though he did write the song One Wish, but yeah. it, it, he's, pre- <laughs> he's present, <laughs> you know. But I think every letter in that song mm-hmm. surprised him. I think he's like, <laughs> ah, I didn't even know I yeah. was going to put an H there. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see what you got He's next, a vessel of God, and he's just <laughs> letting him speak through him. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. He's a vessel. Mm-hmm. I do like that. I Ray do like J is that. ultra instinct. Do you know what I mean? He is Goku's yes. final form mm-hmm. as far as we know. Yeah. Shit. yeah. I like that. I Unstoppable like that. force. Yeah. And there's no brick wall that could possibly meet him. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's not even... Right. It can't happen. Here's the question I have for the both of you. Where does this go? Because he obviously hasn't peaked. Oh, you think you think we're not done seeing the best of what Ray J could do. He's like 41 years old. Yeah, that's... Mm. That's that's like a lot of people, that's when they get in the game as far right. as influential. Yeah. Like, he did all this without the benefit of age behind him to make him more respectable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of Ray J's moves we were looking at as moves of a 25-year-old man, a 24-year-old man. He's on Moesha when he's 16, 17. You know, with the respect of age behind him, I think that this could go anywhere. Do do you at all fear, though, that with age behind him, some of these antics will become less endearing? Do you, do you think that that's, there's any threat of him stopping being the adorable Ray J that we all love and suddenly be, be being just a big old fat dude that we're all like, hey, bro, you got to chill out and call your family? <sighs> No, because the endearing thing is a personality trait. You know mm. what I mean? Even when he was greasy on, you know, what was the show? Ray, Ray, what was the show called? Uh, For the Love of Ray J. For the is Love that... of Ray J. He'd be yeah. greasy on there, but you still liked him because, he, you know what I mean? Is He'll never not have he, an endearing he knew He though. knew how to yeah. get ratings. I got a question. You said he's 41 years old, right? Yeah, something like that. Entering in his second half of his life, you know, the second chapter. Maybe how old 42. was Kobe Bryant when he died? Come on. All right, bro. Come, come on. on. You don't come on. It gets all dark. Right, come on. <laughs> it's just all be it cool. Gets dark at every turn, bro. So it, uh, it's just all I, be cool. I, 
<laughs> Look, that's just we, so we might have to leave easy. the town for a little bit and lay low, <laughs> but the... <laughs> we didn't mean to offend nobody. <laughs> I, I think I think Ray J goes goes all along because I I think Zeus is just this is this is like a beta test for him, and I think he goes ahead right. and completes Bill Cosby's mission of buying NBC, if not NBC. Or mm. BET, because a lot of people are trying right now. But I think to buy BET right, for sure. Ray J is the one who gets the the right people together, the right chess pieces, and then they just make a quick, swift chess move by BET, and he's a part of that. You know, you know what's crazy is that is that they were just who was it? Uh, the Weather Channel nigga and Tyler Byron Perry. Allen. Byron, Byron Allen. By- Byron Allen were just about to team up. And and buy BET, and you know that the reason that they got turned down, whatever it is, was not because they didn't have the bread. So this isn't a right. money issue. This is a character issue for whoever uh, BET is is owned by. And I bet they'll see something in Ray J that they could not see in uh, Comics <laughs> Unleashed. On Bri- Byron, Byron Allen doesn't have the sauce like if the. He don't got no. What they BET want is looking for disgusting black television, and, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's like, bro, I got the program. Yeah. I have the formula. I do this. He yeah. buys BT. That is true. Now you- <laughs> Byron Allen was gonna try to bring the news back. He was yeah. gonna no. Don't nobody want to watch black news, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Tavis Spy- Smiley? Where is he? <laughs> and he's like, nah, mm-hmm. you ain't got what we looking for, man. We looking for a motherfucker yep. who like poison. <laughs> <laughs> and he buys it from Viacom, and then he just shifts the culture one more time on a on a large scale. And I think that will be we the move within the f- next five to ten years. Damn, yeah, that's, I like that. That's crazy. If Ray J owns <laughs> BT, it wouldn't surprise me, man. That. No, that's a, that's, a, here's the thing, that's a very possible move. And I, I'll say this. I think if Ray J owns BET, I think niggas will stop making fun of yeah. it the same way they do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, 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 I like BET programming, though. Do you? <laughs> Don't do it to me. No. I- <laughs> <laughs> You didn't watch did all those mini movies they did, the new edition and the Whitney years. No, no, the- no, you don't get to do that. You're talking about BET from like ten years ago. I'm asking. You said you like BET programming as if you are currently caught up on BET program. What do they got like, now? They got Miss Pat. Hold on, I'm pulling it up. I got, I got it. I did let it lapse on my th- shit though. Yeah, I, I just want to. I'm trying to understand what you are currently watching on BET K- program. KJ Smith's show. <laughs> Whatever her name is, you know what? You're right. You're right. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't think you like I'm talking what about. Doing. I'm talking about a few years ago. I'm yeah. not watching Average Love or King. I no. think they're bringing back Comic View though. Tyler Perry has like four shows. They are bringing back Comic View. I did hear. That. Are they? Are they been saying that though? I feel like. That that's true. I also I, know some people who taped for whatever was supposed to be a new Comic View, and then they never. Didn't be a was thing. that the Kevin Hart one? Kevin Hart with Mike Epps. Oh, maybe. Yeah. So Kevin Hart's, uh, I think, EP in it. Mike Epps is running the host spot. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna host. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's actually good. I'll watch that. That's better for him than than. So they settled their beef. Yeah. Right. I forgot that Kevin Hart and Mike Epps mm-hmm. had beef. That was a weird beef. I bet Ray J squashed <laughs> it. I bet. Oh, he- I bet he put in a call. <laughs> He's the only one who could do it. <laughs> he like, yo, Kev, let's get Mike on the phone. Let's end man. it right let's now just... for the for the people. <laughs> let's bring back Comic View. My dad the other day, uh, my dad uh, is on TikTok and and I guess his algorithm is now feeding him a fuck mm-hmm. ton of comedians. And he called me. He was like, have you heard of Gary Owen? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> He's like, it's not bad. It's pretty good. I'm like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. I don't know how to tell you this. <laughs> but you might got the worst taste in comedy. <laughs> 
And I hate that you listen to this so often. If if that if those two things are the crossover, then then we might be mm-hmm. the fucking worst. I love you that of all I love that all of all the shit he 